Yeah. Okay, so this will be a conversation about all the words that includes balancing, which is hard as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we have a little lag on the beep. This is a podcast series from Subtech with uh, where we dig into uh, all the technical stuff and uh, all the all the stuff that we do here at uh, Subtech that people might uh, have some uh, questions about or wonders. Uh, here we can dig deep into uh, everything that you uh, have questions about. And this episode will be uh, about load balancing, phase balancing. And everything in between. And today I have uh, Mike here with me. Welcome. Thank you. So I guess I'm put in this chair to ask all of the stupid questions. Not stupid, but like I will ask you anything. Yeah. Please okay. do. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, I will just hit my start button. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let's begin. Uh, you mentioned load balancing, phase balancing, but also the septic sense. Yeah. First, what is load balancing? Load balancing is because load is kind of uh, a word for um, the consumption, like a power load, the electricity load. If you turn on the light, the load increase. If you turn off the light, the load decrease. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the concept of load. So when we say load balancing, it's because your house or the building is using power for much different stuff. Lights, elevators, uh, cooking, everything uh, electric uses, of course, power. So when we say we can do load balancing, it's just that we can have the charger go in and uh, it's not a fixed uh, setting on the charger. It can it can go up and down in consumption. Okay. Uh, what about I I read both I believe I've read static load balancing but also dynamic. What yeah. is dynamic load balancing? I think it's kind of inflation to the word people or other companies use. So uh, there is now. Um, some people can say static or uh, uh, what did you say? Static. Dynamic. Yeah. Dynamic. Uh -huh. Yeah, they can use dynamic. Are you telling me that this is just a buzzword? Dynamic. There's no such thing. I would say it's not the same meaning in all companies uh, or mm. at all products. So you can say you have dynamic load balancing, but it it's not always dynamic or oh. what we see as dynamic. Okay, so it can mean different things yeah, depending so. on the sender. It's, it's like the word smart. You can have smart watch, you can have smart whatever, smart lights, but then it's up to you what you think, what, what makes a smart charger or mm -hmm. a smart light. So I would say it's the same happening to uh, dynamic or static. Okay. But static is something that doesn't change. So the installer, he makes a load balancing when he do the installation but it doesn't ever change after. Okay. So it stays the way it was installed. Mm. But with dynamic, uh, at least in our sense, it's uh, changing uh, depending on the consumption of the building. So we can, we can uh, shift uh, the load uh, related to what the building is using. Okay. So I think this takes me over to static sense because mm. If my car needs to know if it needs to, you said it much better than me, but change the load. Yeah. It needs to know what the house is using. Yeah. So how will my car know that I'm cooking inside and washing all of the dirty clothes at the same time? A fair, uh, fair question. <laughs> and it's not, in our world, it's not the car that gets this message, it's the charger. So we yes. have the sense in the fuse box. And the sense, it's, um, it's, you can, it's the beginning of sense because it's actually a sensor. <laughs> it's sensing or just uh, receiving information about the consumption of your house. And it gives that information to our cloud. And our cloud decides what the charger should do 
and then gives the charger the message that you should go, you can go up or you should go down. Okay. That's kind of our cloud giving the message because the sense is giving some inputs that uh, either shows high or low consumption in your house okay. or building. So said in other words, the septic sense is kind of like a communication tool. Yeah. Um, communicating between your house and not the car, but the charging unit itself. Yeah. Okay. With our cloud in between. Yeah. So that's where they connect. Okay. So you need this like communication tool in, a, in order to enable load balancing. You can have load balancing without sense. Let's say you have uh, multiple chargers. Because in your private house, maybe you have one, maybe you have two. If you only have one charger, you cannot load balancing much without sense because you need to have more than one thing to... to uh, because if it was only one charger, the charger doesn't know anything about what your house is using. There is no other chargers there. What should it though regulate against? It needs to have some input to say you can go up or you can go down, but if it's only that... The charger only knows about himself or itself. Mm. It has no point. So if you only have one charger, you need a sense? Uh, if you want to do the load balance. Yeah, yeah. To obviously, obviously. Yeah, yeah. We all do, don't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, why do we want load balancing? Why is that a good thing? Uh, it's, uh, the, I think uh, the reason can change depending on the country you're living and uh, how the electricity is built. So maybe, let's say for Norway, the more power you use at the same time, the more expensive each kilowatt is. Yeah, I can confirm. Yeah. And in other countries, maybe they have more fixed, um, fixed price on electricity, so it doesn't vary that much. But maybe then they have uh, day rate and night rate. So depending on how the electricity is built, the, um, the focus on the consumer can be different okay but um, I would say if I go back a little bit if you have more chargers than one they can load balance between themselves without sense so let's say you give this uh, X amount of chargers this is your um, this is your uh, given power uh, limit power limit and they will kind of uh, balance between them to not nice. use more than the limit that they have. Okay. So that they will do without sense. Okay. Is this only in system charging or can it also be in a home installation with a maximum three chargers? Max three chargers also. So let's okay. say you have three chargers and you gave you give these three 20 amps. So then these three chargers need to share those 20 amps. Mm. And if you put sense into the same mix, then these 20 amps can be lowered if the house is using more power. I get it. I do. I really do. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then back to the balancing word. Mm -hmm. Load balancing versus face balancing. Yeah. What is the difference? Face balancing is kind of the next level uh, load balancing where you can, because now it's getting super technical because to, do, to understand phase balancing, you need also to understand there is more than one phase connected to the car or to the charger. But phase balancing is uh, only available on our Subtech Pro charger, which is uh, in most cases installed in the larger installations, maybe public space. I'm just thinking, hey, that's not only only. No, it's not only. <laughs> But for all the, all the private people maybe listening, uh, yeah. it's uh, face balancing is not something that we have on um, private house Do we need that? Do I need that? I have one electric vehicle at home and mm. I only drive, we, we only have one car. No. Not only, I mean we have one car and it's yeah. sufficient. Yeah. Um, why don't I need face balancing at home? Because the consumption is so low. Uh, compared to, let's say, the large-scale installation with a few hundred chargers sharing the same power, then you can enough. With the phase balancing, you optimize the load because you can choose what phase to charge on. Mm. But again, you need to kind of understand that we have three phases, uh, 
which is uh, individually can be loaded with charging cars. Yeah. So if you have like a static phase balancing solution, then if here you go, it's the word static again. Yeah. Okay. So it so, means something here with the phases. Yeah. Okay. Because if it's static, it doesn't move. It stays the way the installer did yeah. install it. So if all the cars coming in is is uh, randomly ending up on one of the phases, then this is kind of all maxed out. But they're and they are really slow charging because there is not much in one of these. That you want to use the two others. Without phase balancing, dynamic phase balancing, you cannot take one car and move it to the other phases where there is more available mm -hmm. power. What I've heard, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but with traditional um, system charging, it's like uh, the installer comes, install the unit, and then it's kind of like uh, a jackpot, whether you will have like which face you will be yeah. connected to. Yeah. So if I live like in an apartment building uh, and I'm coming home from work and I'm plugging in, I will, let's say I was given phase two from mm -hmm. the very beginning, since mm -hmm. the day that the electrician came in yeah. and mounted the charger. That means that I will always charge on phase two. Yeah. But with the Saptic Pro, it will change. Yeah. I can one time, one day it will be phase two, it could be phase three and phase one, depending on how many vehicles charging at the same time. Gotta and love that. If, and if you put sense into the mix, yeah. then we can also see uh, the building's consumption split in three phases. So if the building's consumption is higher on one of the phases, then we can do the charging on the other two. Yeah. Or vice versa. We will always kind of look at having the uh, use all the available power that we have. Mm. And that is also advantage if you because most of the buildings uh, completed uh, yeah, up until now is not prepared for charging in concern to how much power does the building has have to... Uh, because they only see lights and they see uh, cooking and uh, hot water, ventilation. All these things they, they put into account when they, they add power to the building. And they didn't look at how much power uh, will we have for charging cars. Because if you yeah. go 10 years, 20 years back, there wasn't any EV, EV cars. Yeah. So when we take the Pro into a building, 20 year so, year old building, the majority of our competitors say you need to add more power to the building to be able to offer EV charging to the building or to the tenants. But we can use the excess power because we can split it on phases and load balancing during the day and night. Yeah. So we can use, so if you utilize all available power all the time, you don't need more power. This sounds, from my perspective, to utilize the power more efficiently, mm -hmm. it's, it's such a marketing text. It's really uh, like, don't get me wrong, but it sounds very, like a buzzword, you utilize the power you have more efficiently, like who doesn't want to, of course I want that. Mm. But it sounds almost like too good to be true when you think of it, because I mean, everyone, every, everyone can say this. Um, so I don't know where I want to go with this, but because <laughs> when you say it, it's yeah. like, of course, but also from uh, a user perspective, it also sounds way more Safe to kind of like add in those extra, um, to add in extra power to make yeah. sure that everybody can have a fast uh, speed while charging. But it's super expensive. Yeah, to it do is. it. Okay, but it just—I don't know. It sounds—it sounds too good to be true that there are two, like the three phases, and there are two remaining phases that we like rarely use. Uh, that's not the case, but it can—it can be very big variations. On the con on the loads that these have, I should have like a. You should have your flipboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it shows better, but um, it's like a, a three a highway with three lanes. Mm. Uh, if you have Subtech Pro, you can swap between the lanes depending on the traffic. So if it's a queuing in one lane, you just switch to the other lane. But if you have static, 
you select a lane in the beginning of the road and you cannot uh, swap lanes during the, the journey. I really love, I think you said to me once that you could also compare it to um, taps, beers on taps. Yeah. <laughs> so it must be really, really annoying if you're in like a line and you only use one and you have three available, but yeah. you can only tap from one. Yeah. It will create a massive line, I guess. Mm -hmm. In this case, a lower charging speed. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, because if you yeah. moved all the people standing I in hate one queuing. line, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I can only imagine that car will uh, as well hate yeah. queuing. I mean, yeah, <laughs> and the owners. So uh, would you say you understand face balancing? Yes, but I also do have a question because we say utilize power better, but what happens if we don't? What happens to um, the power like in all of the three phases? What happens to those that we don't use? What happens to that electricity? Uh, it just vanishes. Yeah, it, it's Circulates. actually being used by someone else. In another building? Yeah. Okay, because it moves on? Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't hurt that much. <laughs> it just moves on. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's again, if you have uh, your, um, your available power as this, and if you don't use all of it, uh, and you still feel that it's very slow charging. So let's say a lot of the people are on one of the phases, they always charge on the same phase, and they feel like this is going too slow. I, I want to have more power to the building so I can charge faster. What do you would say slow is in this case? Maybe nothing. Maybe they it will happen to stand in queue, wait mm. for the others to finish, mm. or maybe even uh, one kilowatt or two kilowatts. Yeah. Two kilowatts. But anyway, if they feel that this is going too slowly and people start to complain and uh, they need to do something, and they still have available power when they are doing the complaining and they, they don't feel like this is not a good experience for me with having an EV car, then it's kind of... Uh, Stupid if if they really have enough power, but they don't they don't use it. Do you have do you know of any examples where they actually had that traditional first one where they were connected to one face, but then realized that it wasn't good enough, and then that they trusted the septic system to actually work with the existing um, power that were in the building? You know of anyone who kind of like tossed away everything they had and got septic pro instead? Yeah. That sounded very marketing-ish when yeah. I asked, but it is a real question. <laughs> yeah, but it has happened many times and it's not kind of, it's not always that it's the load balancing that is the problem, but uh, uh, if you go back uh, some years, the, the first large scale installations, they had kind of a physical limit. So let's say you could maximum have 20 chargers and the garage was 50. So when they reached 20, they needed to make a decision on investing in uh, another system from the same vendor or choose a system from one vendor that can kind of supply all 50 chargers with, uh, or all 50 parking spots with, with uh, charging. Yeah, and with the same amount of power. Yeah. Okay, nothing has ended there, okay, no. or changed. Okay, good, well, it makes sense. We've been through septic sense, load balancing, which was reading kind of like the house or the building and then adjusting accordingly. Mm. And then the face balancing, which is also adjusting among the other um, EV owners or cars that is charging. But at the same time, it speaks with the building mm -hmm. with load balancing as well. Yeah. So if the building is using phase one, then the charging uh, units will go for phase two and three. Yeah. And maybe someone... That is, easy. Yeah. <laughs> and if someone wonders, because many thinks that all cars or many cars charge on three phase, but the truth is that most cars are one phase charging, and then you have a bunch of cars still that charge on three phase. But the, th the thing that we can explain is that all cars that charge on three phase can charge on one phase. They can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have a car that charge on three phases, it can still charge on one phase. Like Tesla? Like Tesla. Do you know of anyone else? Uh, Audi. Okay. Uh, Volkswagen. 
So Mercedes. So yeah, I know that the car I drive, it says it can, but it's not advised in Norway. So I don't. I yeah, don't. but then we are on the IT grid uh, okay. discussion. Okay, let's but, not go there. And let's no. not go there. But uh, I guess you have an onboard charger, with this, which is three phase. So you can charge on three phase. Mm. On the T and 400 yeah. volt, blah, blah, blah. I live the wrong place. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, but we can, tell, we can tell your car to charge on one phase. So when you have a lot of cars in the same garage and you all need to share the power, then we tell the three-phase cars to go one phase so we can kind of evenly uh, yeah, distribute. distribute. Yeah. So it won't be like that a Tesla comes in and just you know demands all of the power because it has three phases. Mm, no. Okay. We will tell it. Hey, to hey, stop hey. down, not be that cocky. Yeah. Okay. Tesla needs to hear whoa, this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then charge on one phase. But let's say... Uh, people are leaving the building, uh, disconnecting their cars, leaving, and the Tesla is still there, we can give it three phase back mm. if it kind of fit into the consumption of the building. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, I, um, I think I'm out of questions. I learned a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.